Our goal here today is, is we're bringing two strains of wild coho salmon here to Salmon Creek, which has, have not had coho salmon in it for, for decades. And we're releasing those fish here in hopes that they will spawn and uh, create their own strain of fish in Salmon Creek again. They get eggs and they hatch them, and then they bring them out in these core things, and then they put them out in the river. These are like really endangered fish, and you don't really get to, you know, like when I'm older, I probably won't get to see them, or because they might be extinct, so. Um, and I remember as a boy, uh, uh, lots of them, and you know, some of them are fish like this, and watching them spawn and kick up the gravel and things like that. Now, I, um, I very seldom see any even steelhead coming in there. Well, what's been going on over the past at least 150 years plus is that we've been degrading the environment. The habitat has been so degraded for the species, the salmonid species, that we have very few less of. And, and then you have past practices of logging and some other factors that certainly contributed to some of the, the siltation problems, but we know better now. Um, we definitely, which I think is the biggest limiting factor, don't have enough water. Right now it's naturally a dry area and it's been impacted by drought due to climate change. There's more people. The ranches have been subdivided. So you have a lot of people living out here. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I understand why they've come. But people need water. There are legal and illegal diversions from the creeks, as well as uh, groundwater overdrafting. And the water here is definitely overappropriated and vineyard development in this watershed, even with best management practices, create sedimentation, erosion sedimentation, and vineyards need water, and we're already over-appropriated, and by adding more vineyard development, it's gonna take water that we already don't have, so. I think the important thing for us to remember about salmon is that they're a canary in the coal mine, and so if the water is going away because it's being used too much, then the fish will go away first, but that's an indicator that a water crisis is coming for you and your family because the watershed is drying up. If the fish are going away because there's too much dirt being dumped in the stream that's clogging up their spawning gravels, that's an indicator that your sustainability as an agricultural place will be limited because agriculture depends on good soil that should stay on the land and not in the creek. So the extinction of these salmon gives us insight into the way of the future that as they go away, so will your family and the generations to come. Salmon Creek is an area that I have a special attraction to because it's a small watershed, but it's totally restorable for salmonids. There's great capacity building in this watershed with all of the non-governmental organizations, the various agencies, the landowners, and there's an endless amount of enthusiasm and goodwill here. I think they have a pretty good shot. Oh, and in several years from now, we'll be looking for uh, ocean returns whether that we will be successful in reestablishing a population, uh, time will tell. So my hope is to the children of today, when they become parents and have their own children, they'll get to go down to the creek and see the coho so thick that they could walk on their backs and they could speak like their grandparents used to about Salmon Creek. Days of old will be the days of the future. Uh, we don't have any time left to really sit down and talk and plan and assess. We really have to take action now because we are at the 11th hour as far as restoring habitat for these populations of fish. To ensure the conditions for the salmon are good here, people need to use less water, use what water they have wisely, reuse that water through gray water systems, or make sure their septic system is functioning well, 
reduce the storm water discharge off their property, try to keep it on their land, recharge it, recharge the groundwater, make sure that the pollutants off of their property or soil from their property does not get into the creek, try to ensure that their uh, driveways are not dumping dirt into the creek, make sure their gardens are not dumping toxins or other chemicals or fertilizers into the creek, and ultimately everything that we put in the water comes back to us.